Hey everyone, it's me Charlie here, welcome back. Today I'm here with the Pokemon video that I originally had scheduled for last month but ended up getting delayed until this month because, as you probably know, my schedule kind of got interrupted by the last Nintendo Direct, which sort of came out of nowhere, really. Hopefully, however, my schedule should be totally back to normal now. Lots has happened this month relating Pokemon. The biggest event, of course, probably being the reveal of the new Generation 8 Pokemon games on the Switch. Pokemon Sword and Shield, and also the new starters for those games as well. It's kind of crazy to think that we already have so much info on these games. Just last month, after I saw the most recent Nintendo Direct, I was sort of accepting that I probably wouldn't be getting any news on any new Pokemon game anytime soon, at least till much later in the year, and probably having to wait all the way until E3 for a trailer, right? If you told me last month that we'd be getting not only names for both of the games, but also new starters and a complete trailer, I definitely wouldn't believe you. I was thinking of doing a reaction video to the live stream, but I didn't end up doing one because the live stream was really early in the morning, you know, because of time zones. And um, when I watched it for the first time, it was school morning, so I didn't have the time <laughs> to set everything up and film. And I definitely wasn't gonna wait until the afternoon to see it for the first time. Like it was out, I was gonna watch it, obviously. So I figured I'd just put my thoughts and feelings together, you know, into this little bit before the start of this video. So basically, initial thoughts. Uh, it looks really good. Uh, UK region, pretty cool. Every region that comes out is just another region closer to an Australian-based one. You know they're gonna do it eventually. <laughs> it's just a matter of time. Think of all the things they could do, all of the amazing animals and places and things they could take inspiration from. Anyway, Gala region. Cool name, by the way, Gala. It feels really... Regal? I don't know. It, I, it just kind of fits well, I think, uh, for a UK-based region. <laughs> and just among the other region names in general, honestly. The only negative thought I've had so far towards the um, region is um, after looking at a map of it, it looks a bit linear, like it's just working from the bottom of the region towards the top. Um, which I'm not a huge fan of, but I, I don't know, that map is also missing some gems here and there, so I don't know how final it's gonna be. It's probably going to be quite final though, considering like they've revealed it and everything, like you'd think it would be pretty definitive, but anyway. The titles are very different from anything that we've had before. But again, they make sense if we're going for a medieval sort of theme for some places in the region, which I'm sure we are, with what with it being England and all. I'll probably be picking shield because everyone else will be picking sword, so why not? The starters are awesome. Not quite a lower level awesome, but like they're pretty up there. I'm really interested to see where they'll go evolutionarily. I think my favorite right now is score bunny. You know I'm a sucker for the fire types, especially when they're cute. <laughs> but that might change when we get to see their evolutions. More waiting. Ugh. I wish the games could just come out tomorrow and we could buy them and play them now. But Pokemon Sword and Shield will probably end up being Nintendo's big system-selling games for the holiday season this year. Which is annoying. Lots of waiting to be done. But if they're good and worth the wait, I will wait as long as I have to. With the recent announcement of these new entries into the series, I'm not only very hyped, because of course I am, but also I'm rekindling my love, in a way, for the series. It's been a while since I played a whole Pokemon game all the way through, especially a new one. So a brand new game along with a new region, a whole new lineup of Pokemon, and of course a whole new story, is a perfect way to return to the series. I unfortunately didn't get to play Let's Go Pikachu or Eevee um, as of yet because I figured I'd just wait for a whole new generation to play Switch Pokemon basically. But I will probably get around to playing them eventually after I've played through, you know, the new games when they come out. The idea of Pokemon on the Switch is really exciting for me. A handheld version of the game to play on the go, just like generations prior, but also being able to play it on a TV in docked mode at 1080p. <laughs> it's everything I've wanted and more. But anyway, as I was saying, while revisiting the Pokemon franchise and in turn my hype for the upcoming games, I've also revisited a bunch of Poketubers and their videos. True Green 7, MNJTV, The Aura Guardian, The Supreme Arcanines, you name it, I've probably watched a video of theirs recently. But one Poketuber who I never parted from in the first place was a man by the name of Birdkeeper Toby. He's been my favorite Poketuber for ages now, 
and I definitely think he deserves more attention in the community, honestly. His approach to the franchise is so incredibly original and creative, which is what I admire and respect most about his work. I always enjoy his theories and general discussions about the Pokemon world. One of my favorite series on the channel that he's done was his uh, Tree of Evolutionary Life series, which was basically a series where he discussed the different ways that some Pokemon have evolved from others and how it's all linked together in one big evolutionary tree which you then can also buy as a cool poster once you finish the whole series. I personally love how much time and effort and obvious love for his work goes into every single upload, and it really shines through. If you're into Pokemon and you haven't heard of him, go check him out, he's awesome. His channel is BirdKeeperToby, link in the description. But hands down, my favorite of his many series he's had on his channel has to be his My Pokemon World series. It's a series that I feel really symbolizes their creativity and originality that the Birdkeeper Toby channel is all about. It's a series that branches over many individual mini sub-series, if you will, but they're all videos about fantasy regions and gyms and evil teams, all from the mind of Toby, all inside of the Pokemon universe, where the star of every episode is, you guessed it, Toby himself. Every episode always goes really in depth about the world and the ideas and picture that he imagines. As you may have guessed if you've seen any of his videos before, that is where the inspiration for this video comes from. Now I don't know if I'll make this into an actual series here on the channel, but if I did, I wanted to make a video to sort of kick it off, I guess. And even if I don't make it into its own thing, it's okay, at least I did something with these ideas. Today, I want to revisit an idea that wasn't actually originally invented by Birdkeeper Doby, I don't think. Ah, uh, yeah, I believe credit goes to Mr. Buddy for the idea. Link down in the description to his channel as well. But I believe it was at least popularized by Toby. At least that's where I first heard of it from. His mini sub-series as part of the overarching My Pokemon World series called My Pokemon Gym aimed and eventually succeeded to cover every Pokemon type in the game and how Toby would theme a gym of that specific type. Everything from the look and feel of the gym itself to its location to even the Pokemon and the specific moves that those Pokemon would use. So today, inspired by that sub-series, I'm here to present you my ideas for a Dr. W42's My Pokemon Gym. As this is the first episode in this potential series, no promises. I decided to kick things off strong with my favorite Pokemon type, the fire type. So without further ado, come take a trip with me into the world of Pokemon and to my Pokemon gym, the fire type. The first thing my mind jumped to when thinking of ideas for this gym was probably the most obvious choice uh, inside or around a volcano. But I thought that idea was a little too overdone and boring. So I instead decided to go with something very different and that's a bit more original. This gym will be either Gym 6 or 7 through this Pokemon region. Exploring the Pokemon region on your journey, you travel to a town known as Carrot Town, as in C-A-R-A-T, not as in C-A-R-R-O-T, okay? It's not a farming town. <laughs> Famous for its mining industry that allows the town to keep itself running. It's a sizable town with many houses and villages. As you travel the town, you visit the town's large active mine, a large chasm filled with large machinery, whirring, and people chipping away in search of minerals. But in conversation with the locals, you hear whispers of the town's original but now abandoned mine, who no one on the surface dares to enter. After further questioning, the townsfolk tell you of the stories that they've heard about an underground village of earth dwellers who live deep in said mine. Trainers partaking in the gym challenges, like yourself, are the only ones who dare to venture down into the deep down, dark deep down of the mine, as the earth dwellers village accommodates the fire type gym of this region. Of course, the brave trainer that you are willing to go to extremes to collect all of the region's gym badges, decide to travel down the mine to meet the Earth Dwellers. You take one of those big mining elevator things down an abandoned mine shaft to below the surface of the Earth. The elevator stops at the very bottom level of the mine, opening out into a large tunnel, with obvious signs of previous mining expeditions like leftover pickaxes and just places where you can see that the wall's been chipped away. Whilst traveling down the tunnel further into the mine, you're met with unique Pokemon, most likely rock and ground types, and maybe some trainer battles from geologists or simply just brave explorers. Uh, either of those or 
maybe a mix of the two ideas works well, I think. Travel far enough down the mineshaft and you'll come across the fabled village of people who made home there many years ago when the mine was first abandoned. It turns out the people above ground in Carrot Town were simply scared of the unknown, as the people in the village are, in reality, really welcoming to you as a newcomer and just kind in general. Their love for fire and ground rock type Pokemon led them to stay there for many generations. It turns out that you and the other trainers completing the gym challenges aren't the only ones to visit this village. The village is also a tourist destination due to its unique location and variety of Pokemon. But of course, the reason you're here and why many trainers before you looking to collect all the region's gym badges have come here is to take on the fire type gym. After a quick stop at the Pokemon Center to heal up your team, you sadly decline the locals offerings of food and accommodation and ask them to direct you to the gym. The locals are happy to help a trainer and tell you of the secret pathway, probably in the form of a, a ladder a way away from the village that only trainers are allowed access to. You take the ladder down into a dark tunnel which then widens out into a larger one as you go further down. You follow this tunnel down, down further below the surface into another tunnel, similar to the first tunnel, but this one is much hotter as the further down you're getting, the closer and closer you're getting to the Earth's core. You begin to find Fire-type Pokémon much more frequently, eventually you even come across the first signs of hot magma in the form of small lava pools, which too get bigger as you continue deeper. Finally, after spelunking through the tunnel for a good couple of minutes, you finally reach the pot of fiery magma, if you will, at the end of the rainbow. The final cavern that is covered with flowing lava and many torches that appear to show no signs of extinguishing anytime soon or even ever. But the main attraction is, of course, the gym itself, situated right in the middle of the cavern, raised slightly above the ground on which you're walking, surrounded by a moat of molten lava. Luckily for you, a bridge has been built for access to the gym. Sure, it may not look incredibly sturdy, but it has served the other trainers well in the past. No one's died crossing it. Yet. Yeah, you'll be fine. Trust me. I think. Stepping into this cavern feels a bit like stepping into a sauna. The heat is so strong. After taking a moment to breathe and take in your surroundings, you hesitantly and very carefully take the bridge over to approach the gym trying not to look down as you go. After a treacherous couple of seconds, you're on the other side of the bridge, right at the door to the gym. You place your hand on the handle of the gym to open it, but quickly retract your hand in pain. The handle is, of course, incredibly hot. So hot that you actually need one of your party Pokemon to use a water type move on it, so that you don't burn yourself trying to enter. This is like some other gyms with HMs such as Cut, just as a sort of mini obstacle sort of thing I guess, <laughs> as if the caves weren't enough already. But it shouldn't be difficult at all, if you're taking on a fire type gym you probably already have a water type with you anyway. You pull the doors wide open and are instantly hit with a blast of heat so strong you almost fall over. Recovering yourself, you take a deep breath and step inside. If stepping into the cavern was like stepping into a sauna, walking into this gym feels like the inside of a volcano. But it's not actually the inside of a volcano because that would be boring and unoriginal. But you are determined to win this badge. Shaking off the intense heat, you look around to take in your surroundings. The main attraction is a large pool of lava, with varying sizes of rocky platforms poking up through it. The lava itself is flowing in from one side of the room and flowing back out the other. The lava river is separating you from the gym leader on the other side, whose appearance you can't quite make out from here. Poking through the lava are these large chunks of rock. The idea is that you have to hop from rock to rock over the lava to reach the gym leader. As you go across, you're surprised to encounter and battle ex-Team Flare Grunts, who will mainly use Fire-type Pokémon, obviously, and just the Pokémon that Team Flare commonly used in Kalos. Why is Team Flare here? I'll explain that in a second. After battling all of the grunts and making your way over the lava river, you finally reach the gym leader on the other side. He's leaning against the wall, his face obscured by shadows. Well, well, he says, you managed to beat my grunts, which actually wasn't really that impressive, honestly, they're kind of crap, but don't tell them I said that. More significantly, you managed to traverse these caves to reach me. While that might be impressive in itself, my friend, your greatest challenge still lies ahead of you. The gym leader then steps out of the shadows. 
The man standing in front of you is middle-aged and wearing an old and faded team flare uniform. His hair is gelled up, sort of like that part in Captain Marvel when her hair's all like that. Yep, photo. Yep, great. Except like without the weird glowing energy stuff and it's a fiery red color. The gym leader is of course me. And yes, in this timeline, I am a ringer. It's the only time I would ever, ever be a ringer. In an alternate timeline. In another universe. No offense if you're a ringer, but you are the scum of the earth. Joking, obviously. <laughs> and in this timeline, I'm an ex-Team Flare admin, which sort of explains the uniform and the presence of the grunts. I then talk about how some people see fire as an element that's a symbol of rage and destruction but I see fire differently. I think that it better represents a person's burning passion, the consistent ability to bounce back and keep giving it your all, even if you lose. Because just like a good Pokemon trainer, fire is admirable in the way that it continues to burn, just like the torches that decorate this gym. Sure, every now and then a breeze might pick up and you might flicker for a while, but once that breeze clears, you'll relight and be ready to burn again. You've already proved to possess this talent by making your way down here in the first place, but the question still remains, do you have the power to make my flame flicker, or will I burn right through you? I guess we'll just have to see. I reach into my pocket and throw out a Pokeball, and the battle begins. You've already had to do so much to get to this point, so I didn't want to make the final gym battle too difficult. One strong water type will probably make quick work of this team. Basically, it's a team of four Pokemon, none of which are incredibly high level. I obviously went with a fire and rock slash ground theme, so here we go. First Pokemon that I throw out is a level 46 Lampin. I love Lampin, it's a cool Pokemon, I knew I had to include it. Ghost Fire is just such a cool type, honestly, I think there should be more Ghost Fire type Pokemon. For its moveset, it knows Shadow Ball, obviously get off that stab damage, uh, Inferno, more, more stab damage, and then just to be annoying, uh, it's also got on it Confuse Ray and Will-O-Wisp, just to, you know, be annoying basically, and uh, Will-O-Wisp to just wear your team down over time I suppose. The second Pokemon that I throw out is a level 45 Houndoom. Houndoom is a cool Pokemon as well and I thought it sort of suited the like um, dark, fiery sort of tone of like these caverns. It knows Foul Play, Flamethrower, Smog, and Roar. Roar again in there just to be annoying. And then Foul Play and Flamethrower in there just for that stab damage. The third Pokemon is a level 44 Mukago. Now Mukago is a Pokemon that I knew I had to have on this team, just purely because of its typing, and also because, you know, it's a snail. Snail's like a good dark place to hang out, um, so this makes sense for this Pokemon to be here, I guess. Uh, Rock and Fire obviously is very relevant as well for a typing. This Mukago on it has Earth Power, Flamethrower, once again you'll see it pop up quite a few times because it is such a good fire type move. Yawn and Harden. Gotta throw on these sort of stally, a bit more annoying <laughs> moves as well as the main damage dealing moves. But you defeat all three of my first Pokemon and I finally have to pull out the big guns. My prized possession, my fourth Pokemon I throw out is Infernape. Now this is a bit of a weird one for a gym leader to have because it is granted a starter Pokemon. Or, well, an evolution of a starter Pokemon, whatever. But Infernape is such a cool Pokemon. It's my favorite fire type. It's like one of my favorite Pokemon. I can't not put it here. <laughs> I, I, If I'm doing a fire type gym, I can't not put Infernape on the team. So here it is. And in this case, it is my strongest Pokemon. The final, final, final challenge of this gym. It knows close combat, flare blitz, acrobatics, and protect. So he is going to be really doing some damage there. I'm pretty happy with the Pokemon I chose. I think they fit the theme well and, you know, I like them well enough. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy with my selection. But despite all this, you manage to defeat me. Alas, I say, it seems that your flame is, in fact, stronger than mine. Here, take this badge. You've earned it. Now, I had a bit of trouble uh, making a badge for this gym, but the basic idea is that it's a volcanic rock with, like, solidified, hardened, like, lava running through it. Very creatively, I decided to name it the Magma Badge. 
I also made a pixelated version because a lot of the art I've been using to show off these locations, all made by me by the way, was uh, pixelated, sort of in the style of earlier generations. Is it because it was easier to make the newer stuff? Probably, but whatever. I congratulate you and send you on your way, wishing you luck on your Pokemon journey. So there you go guys, those are my ideas for a fire type Pokemon gym. Uh, again, no promises on whether I'll turn this into a full series, but this was fun. So, you know, I might end up making more in the future for some other types. Who knows? Thanks once again to Birdkeeper Toby for the inspiration for this video. Link in the description to his channel. Once again, go check him out if you're into Pokemon. He is awesome. If you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments and by hitting the like button down below and subscribing if you're new or if you just haven't already. I don't blame you. I've forget to do that heaps myself. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!